Good evening, everybody. How's everybody out there? Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to the stream. Thanks to uh, Jason there for the handover. I'm just going to pull up the chat now, just see who's on tonight. So who we got in the house? So we got Brian Finnerton Central Motor Railway. Good evening, sir. Flymo Chairman One, Tom Houston Model Rail, Wolfsack Scenix PW, uh, Hot Dog Pilot Andy. How you doing? Anthony Dodge, the Model Train Outsider. Uh, I think that's all we've got in so far. Anybody else popping in? SJ Train World, good evening. Uh, Mysterious Mechanic. It's uh, Jake, isn't it? Uh, Jerry BBR, how you doing? Peter Jackson, Cheetah Heath, good evening. Uh, Joshua W56 Gaming, how are you, Joshua? How are you doing? Alan, Dragon Junction. Well, good evening to you all. Yes, as Jason was saying, we're doing some snow now. I've never done snow before. Um, so this is, this is going to be a bit of trial and error. As you can see, I've, uh, this obviously isn't snow, it's white, it's just bare plaster that I've been working on because, as you know, let me just lift this camera up to give you a view. As you know, this area here was going to be a viaduct. It still is. You can see I've started painting the piers. Um, but then I thought, let's give myself an extra challenge. Let's make a little bit of a waterfall feature at the back as well. So I'm going to be doing that over the next couple of weeks. So you can see there. So I've uh, I've got most of the, the plaster work here done now. So I'm going to be painting this now probably over the weekend and start doing that. I've got uh, some of the Woodland Scenic products to help me do that. Hi Digger, how you doing? Valerie, good evening, how you doing? Model Railway Shed Dino, good evening, sir. And uh, hello to all my channel members as well. I had a new member uh, join last week, Martin O'Keefe. Thanks for joining if you're there, Martin, or hiding in the background. Uh, who else we got coming in? So I hope everybody can hear me. The sound's working okay. So we're going to work on, let me just move the camera around so you can see where I'm going to be working. So this area here. So this is all being done. This is going to be my uh, practice area for doing the scenic work on, for doing the snow. Um, I've got a couple of different products here to try. Uh, obviously, this is going to be my winter layout. So it's going to be permanent snow. It's not a case of putting it down and then taking it back up again. This is going to be a permanent snow fixture. So we've got some WWS two mil snow. I've also got some 0.5 mil snow scatter. I've also got some Woodland Scenic. Uh, and then I've got the melting snow as well. And I've also got the self-adhesive Tufts, and then I've got some of these trees here as well, which will add some snow too as well. Hi, John Piccadilly, how you doing? Good evening, sir. Brian, how you doing? Valerie, I hope to go to Enniskillen on Saturday. I don't know if I can make it because my in-laws are over at the moment, so I mightn't be able to make it. Mark Stanover Model Railway. Good evening, Mark, how are you doing? So let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just mask off this area here. So we just get it on this area for now. I'm going to start off by putting a layer of uh, normal two mil static grass down. Um, I've actually, while I was tidying up, I've got some of my old uh, Woodland Scenic static grass. So I'm going to try putting that down. Uh, as it's going down, it's going to be covered with snow. I'm, I'm not too worried if it doesn't stick very well. Uh, oh, Karen, J94, good evening, sir. Um, Anthony, before I forget, uh, I did message um, Joyce again about those uh, Marklin stuff that I said, do you want me to bring some of that stuff over to um, Getz? If you want some of it, let me know. If you want me to do a video on the bits, a video call showing you all the bits, if you want some of the bits, you're welcome to, and I can bring them over, and then you can take them back with you. 
because I'm sure if you don't want any of the bits, I'm sure maybe um, Dino might be interested in some. I, I believe you're going to get, certainly, Dino. John JMC, how are you doing? Good evening, sir. Leicester Station, Gary, how are you doing? Good evening. And hi to anybody who's lurking in the background. And if I've missed your names, I apologize. But uh, do put any questions or comments in the chat there, and I'm sure I'll pick them up as I go through the evening. Yeah, I'm looking forward to get, what was it now, about three, four weeks away, something like that. Right, let's get started on this. Um, now, how am I going to do this? Right, first off, let's put some, I got some two mil static grass here. I'm just loading up my static grass applicator. Now this is the uh, Woodlet Scenic stuff, which I, you know, I've said before, I didn't get on very well with it. I didn't think it was that good. Um, but I'm just gonna use it on here because I'm gonna be covering up with snow anyway. So we'll see how it goes. I'll let that charge up. Um, where did I put my glue? So I'm going to use some of the where did I put it? All right, let's use some Mod Podge as a basing layer because I can't find my other stuff at the moment. Oh, Moreland Model Railway, Andy. I see you're in the house. Good evening, sir. So let's get a little brush. So I'm just going to do a sort of sample patch to begin with. If you like, just, just sort of this corner. So this is just Mod Podge I'm using just for the first layer. I'm just thinking, do you know what I didn't set up beforehand? Is the vacuum cleaner. So I'll get that out in a minute. Okay, let's get some plastic just to cover that over. too worried about this at the moment but certainly we'll need the plastic when I'm using the layering spray so see that will go everywhere so there's that little patch there to what I will put this on the main camera let me just move that so first off we're going to put down some green two mil <laughs> yeah I heard you mention about this Jason, when you're on there, and I thought, oh, no pressure then, I've got to get this right. All right. I need me stockings. All right, excuse me while I try and find a stocking in my... Uh... Let's put everything in these plastic tubs and the plan was to mark up the tubs number them and list what's in each tub do you think i've done that yet of course not but i do try and keep all my scenic stuff together if not i will be uh Raising my missus's door, looking for a stocking. Oh, there we go, there's one. I don't need green snow. My king447, good evening. Oh. Nobody does it as good as Captain Stanek, Stanover. <laughs> I'm just going to vacuum off that. Okay. 
All right. So in my, see now, I've always had this problem with the Woodland Scenic stuff. It just never seems to stand up. Whereas the, um, the WWS stuff is great. It works really well. Now, I don't know whether it's because you're supposed to use the Static King, which seems to be an awfully big static grass applicator, stroke hopper. All right, let's put some two mil snow on this and just see how it works out. Shaken back, yeah. Who remembers that advert? Jason, whenever I take them, I take them in pairs. So she's never left with just one. All right, so that's the hopper loaded up with the two mil. Now we will take the Dragons are out again. Oh, I didn't clear that nozzle properly last time I used it. Oh, that's uh... I don't know if you heard that, what I asked you there, Anthony, or, or, or even if you replied, but just send me a um, message on Facebook or whatever. Yeah, that's it, exactly. I, I don't know what it is about the Woodland Scenic stuff. It just doesn't seem to, does it? Right. That's gonna take some of the blocking, so let's move on to tin number two. <laughs> Take them very little to use my layout. Yeah, less said about that, Jerry, the better. Right, there we go. Yeah, I just don't like the Woodland Scenic stuff. It just. Right, let's put the snow on. And see immediately that stuff is standing up. And this is only two mils, same as the other stuff. That actually looks quite effective and quite simple. Oh, Mystic Railroad, how are you doing, sir? So there's that little patch there. Let me uh, put on the other camera. So I can give you a close up view. How do you? It's not what I wanted. Right. So there it is. Beard Dipper, how are you doing? Good evening. Yeah, there we go. Now I've just done this little patch. So it was Mod Podge to begin with. It was two mil um, woodland scenic grass. So I'll tell you what, this next section here, let's use two mil uh, WWS grass. 
Let's see what difference that makes. Yeah, it, do, it does look very realistic. I imagine putting a few trees on there. We'll do that later, but let's, um, all right, let's brush this side off where I didn't put the glue. And we'll get some um, two mil woodland scenic. No, not woodland scenic. I get my grasses mixed up now. just to see what the difference is like. Do I have any two mil? Yeah, two mil, summer. Let's just see if you like the, the fibers seem a lot thinner and a lot um, light, lighter in weight, if you like, not uh, color. Yeah, I've got the trees here and I'm going to do scatter some snow over them in a minute. So we'll see how they turn out. And I said I got some tufts as well. So we're going to do the next section, repeat the process, but I'm going to use the WWS 2 mil. Um, really, I shouldn't be using Mod Podge. I should be using the other glue, which for a reason I didn't get out. I seem to get everything else out except that. There we go. There is Mod Podge on. The applicator. I'm just going to move the camera out of the way while I do the static grassing. Hi, Chris. Valley's 56. How are you doing? Yeah, and immediately that stuff looks so much better. Now let's quickly vacuum off the excess. Where did I put me stocking? See things for looking. All right, a bit noisy, guys. about right slightly melting 
Yeah, it, um, so I didn't put it on. That thick. So this is now the uh, two mil woodland scenic going over the top. So I'm going to put this on a little bit thicker so you can see. It's not how it looks like. So the camera over again. So you can see how it's put on a little bit thicker here. So it looks like a thicker blanket of snow, obviously, as opposed to there where it's slightly melting. Now what I want to use is some of the, the melting snow scatter. So we'll do another section here, green, put some of this on. Because really what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a trial and testing and just see what looks good and what works and because I've never done snow before. Right, let's go with Find the edges a bit more. I always mean to do this, you know, to not go to the full extent of the glue. So you, you have a section to uh, do when you do the next round. So it might also be better just to let this Mod Podge sit for a few minutes before putting the static grass on it. Right. Oh, he's messaging me. Hey, I want to. Right. Okay, Anthony. I got that. I'll um, I'll try and remember to do that after the stream, as I'll just forward on what I sent to. Joyce onto yourself. Because I sent it to Joyce wondering if she wanted to get any of the stuff for you for Christmas so you wouldn't know about it. Right, so there's the layer of green on. I'm not putting it on really thick so it's a luscious green. It's just there just to do a basic covering because of course it's going over it then with snow. It's supposed to be hillside so there'll be some bare ground as well. So. Um, vacuum off. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, guys, didn't warn you. Vacuum coming up. Right, so let's put the white back in the bag and we'll use some of the melting snow scatter on here. Just, I just want to see what it looks like and how best then I can use it on, on the layout. Hi Robert, how are you doing? Carbon Junction, good evening. Tom Couples, good evening. Uh, John and I find to hold the machine as close as I can in the area I'm applying the grass. That makes yeah, it's um the, the biggest thing I find with static grass is it just really depends on the day. Because sometimes you can do the exact same thing and it won't stand. 
and then the next day it will. Martin Shedmouth Junction, good evening, sir. How are you doing? Have you made up your mind yet whether you're going to Getz or Worley, or are you going to go to both? Or Anyway, how is everyone tonight anyway? What uh, what sort of modeling has everyone been up to? Um, I'll put up the, the link in a minute and we'll do a bit more of this. And then if you want, you can come on the stream and say hello. Right, so I've got the melting snow, which is this, in the, the applicator. So I'm just gonna put it over this green now just to see how that looks. Got to remember not to shake that can in front of me, right in front of the mic. Playing when you repeat a pudding sound. Oh, nice. <laughs> retired two weeks ago, not fine. <laughs> From what I hear, when you retire, you have even less time. Well, I don't think I'll retire. All right, so this is the two mil melting snow. So let's see what this looks like. Hmm. and blend it into the white there a bit, just to see. Yeah, I'm not convinced by that. Let's just hold it over it. Captain Static Dance. <laughs> uh, I've seen your message there, Martin, that sort of whizzed up. Was, was, I didn't quite get whether Getz was a yes or a no. Anybody in the know regarding Getz, what's the story with parking? Because I know um, MK Dons are playing on the Saturday. So does that mean there'll be no parking on the Saturday or very limited or? I'll try DC chips, not very good. <laughs> right. What was I putting in here? No, I didn't mean to do that at all. Sorry, I'm uh, trying to talk and do things at the same time. It just doesn't work. Limited parking, get there early. Okay. Thanks for that, John. I'm just about to mark the excess now just to see what it looks like. I must say, I'm not as convinced with that. Now, maybe if I go over it again, do another layer. But it doesn't look like melting snow to me. Maybe you're just supposed to, actually, let's try that. Maybe you're just supposed to put that on straight away and not have green underneath it. So let's do another test patch. 
I'm going to run out of hillside in a minute. So I'm going to put the, I'm just going to do this little patch here. So I'm going to do the same again, but I'm not going to put any green down first. I'm just going to put the um, melting grass straight on with no green underneath it. Just see how that looks. Looks fine to you. Mm. No, it's just this has got like, it's obviously got some of the white through it and green through it. So just wonder if I put it on. Like when I watch Martin do this, he, of course, Martin always makes it look so easy when he's using his products. Yes, yeah, so just like this, just do that. And there you go. I'm like, wow, yeah. Says parking milk king's bowl where they do the popcorns only disable parking at the show is it right okay yeah i think the first bit i done looks better the second bit where i put it on heavier not so good all right so now we're just going to put on the two mil hmm be honest, I think that bit there looks slightly better than that bit there. I'm trying to stand out of the, the shadows. Anyway, right, let's do some trees. I'm just going to clear some space. What I'll do is I'll do the traditional sort of just shake it on and then I'll get the static grass applicator out and see how that goes. Slush lower down and snow higher up. Yeah, that would be about right. Yeah. I mean, I quite like the first bit, the second bit, not so much. This here. Not a fan. Right, just grabbing my cheap little hairspray. Right, so this I'm going to sprinkle on some of the 5.5 mil snow scatter. Oh, this looks like I should be wearing a mask for this because it looks so fine. Right. So, one tree, move the camera, there it is. I'm gonna spray it with just cheap hairspray. Again, when you're doing this, wear gloves. As you can see, I am. I'm doing it over a piece of paper so the excess that falls off, I can uh, reuse. Yeah, what do you think? Nice light coloring, covering of snow. So that's the 0.5 mil scatter. And I'll just give that a blast of the layering spray, which I used to fix things in. And leave that to dry. And I'm going to 
put that back in. And now what I'm going to use is some of the snowflake snow from Woodland Scenic. Just, I just want to compare it just to see all freshly sealed. See if it looks any different. So same tree again, same process. One tree. Sorry, I'm not keeping an eye on comments at the moment. So, and we're going to use the stuff. This feels like it's just salt. <laughs> it's got that sort of grainy feeling to it. Yeah, there we go. So if we compare it to the other one. I think the WWS one, which is this one here, looks slightly better. So. Now, we'll put that away. We'll get out my static box. I'll make sure it's far away from my laptop this time so I don't blow up my laptop like I did last time. Did I leave the battery in it? Right, one. I always feel like I'm really going to zap myself with this thing. So, static box. This is the 0.5 mil snow scatter. Same type of tree again. Again, hairspray. Put the clip on. Right. I'm hoping this doesn't zap my phone. <laughs> the picture disappears, you know what happened. And if you see me on the other camera led on the floor, then if the camera goes off, yes, Snow White. Very good, very punny. Right, anyway, let's uh, switch this on. something. Right, what do we think of that? <laughs> My glasses have been found. I was sat on them. Can I see the laptop screen and the buttons? Way to go, Martin. <laughs> so there we go, 0.5 mil using the box. Point 0.5 mil, just shaking it on. So you can see this is a thicker covering than this. And then the wooden scenics. So let's actually just seal them in. I don't think I sealed this one. So I imagine them, I'm not going to um, put them in place yet. 
because obviously I want to do all this first. I'm happy with it. Oops, I'll do this sort of leading up there at the minute. All right. So, what do you think, guys? Actually, on camera, I think this one looks the best, which was used on the static box. But in person, I think that one actually looks the best. This one's just, it's, the stuff is just all grainy, so it doesn't look good. Anyone anyway, wants to go to the Rocky Picture Horror Show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i definitely think you need a, a dust mask when you're using this because the, the stuff just goes flying <coughs> and i can taste it in the back of my throat yeah i think the middle one looks best so just by shaking it on Sorry, just had to take a swig or something. Also better, to, yeah, exactly, match what's on the ground. Oh, how you doing, how you doing? Yeah, it's just, um, uh, it's just a static plate, just, I think it was 25,000 volts or something that gets up to with the battery. Like, won't kill you, give you a nasty zap if you manage to touch it with your finger. But um, it's great for doing tufts and the trees and things like that. You look back at some of my previous scenic videos, I think, so I only got that a couple of months ago and you can see where I've done trees and tufts and everything. <laughs> yeah, don't put it near your laptop, Martin. <laughs> If you find the stream where I've got it and I'm using it, as soon as I switch it on, the stream dies because it just blew my laptop up. <laughs> uh, right, what else was I going to do? Yes, I was going to... So what do you guys think about... Where... Where did... Oh, there it is. Missing my camera. Now putting something down the track, putting snow down the track. Is that going to be overkill? If so, if you have snow back here, snow we've seen, um, the little shed, I'm going to put some snow on the roof and put some icicles on it. I think snow down the tracks is overkill. What's your opinions, guys? Yeah, Jason, they are they are pretty good. Actually, do you know what? If anybody wants to join the stream, let's just pop that into. If anybody wants to come on and say hello, you're more than welcome. Put it on. Number one daughter, but I mean not the oldest, not the uh, number one, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, why would it not be there? All right, okay, let's give it a go. I think probably the best thing to use for that would be the Woodland Scenic stuff. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a section here and I'm going to put some masking tape there and I'm just going to pour some on and brush it around and just see how it looks. So 
we'll do that. We'll just see how it looks. Wolfsack, how would you make your icicles? Because I've got a couple of ideas. Right, so I'm just putting that bit of tape there just to stop. Do you know what? Let's just tape the whole thing. It's gonna... Just stop it falling off the edge. So, right, let's put a little bit of this on and then brush it around. I can always just vacuum it up then if it doesn't look apart. Actually, let's just vacuum that static grass out of the way first. Right, gonna get noisy. <laughs> Let's just put a little bit of this on. A little bit, he says. No, the track's not live. It's a good point there, Flymo. Whenever you're doing something like this, although it might be tempting to have the trains whizzing around while you're working on it, don't do it because you will break something, you will knock something off, you will short something out and blow up your best locomotive. Um, likewise, you notice that these are all let down. When I put them in, I didn't glue the lights in place purely so I could lay them down when I'm working and take this off because you know when you're leaning over it, you're going to break something. Yeah, everything's disconnected. So just using a uh, makeup brush, just lightly brushing it, similar to the way you do ballast, which I don't think my ballast tool would be any good for this because I think it would be, this stuff is too light. Is a food takeaway lid, which uh, is a small groove in it. See a glue. <laughs> Snow drift, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think of that, guys? I'm just going to try something a minute. I think when I, if I put this camera solo, because my mic's connected to the other camera, I think it, the sound disappears. So I'm just going to put it through a solo layout a minute. And let me know if you can still hear me. So guys, can you still hear me or has... Uh... Or have I disappeared? Okay, Anthony, take care. I'll send you on those pictures. Hi, you're off as well. Okay, take care, mate. I'll catch you again. You can still hear me. Oh, great. So it doesn't. Uh... All right. Okay. No, last time I done that, the uh, the sound disappeared because I switched off the, even though I'm not using the mic on the camera, it's a separately plugged in mic. Yeah, that doesn't actually look too bad. And the way there's a bit of snow left on the sleepers, and the rail heads are clear. Yeah, it actually looks quite good. So. I might leave that as it is. I might brush it around a little bit more, um, but it'd be the same thing. Probably some wet water on it, diluted IPA, hold it all in place. Yeah.
Yeah, so that looks good. So I think some snow on the roofs, which I'll take the roofs off and do them separately. Um, yeah, tree just fell over. Some more snow around here. That's probably all I'm just probably just going to scenic this area, do, do this bit. Because what I got left to do now, so let's talk about what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put a roadway along here, a fence in between, and you know, scenics and stuff in between it. And then so the road will come around to here. This is going to be a little town street scene, so street lights, that sort of thing. Same sort of hut on here, which I'm actually going to paint the same as the one down the other end. I'm going to paint it brown because the light in there, there's a lot of light bleed that comes out through it. So I'm going to do that. I also have to do the buffers for either end. The buffer ahead of this end came off and then I stepped on it. So that's in the bin. And then, of course, we've got to do all this. So I've got to create, pour the water. I've got to paint it, seal it, do the water, do the waterfalls, fix the viaduct in place, put the walls on. So. Mark, are you trying to accustom us to what's on the way? <laughs> yeah, well, this is all the work I got ahead. Yeah, so water in there, waterfall down, some water between these piles, viaduct in, road. I just need to get on and do it. But as always, with your hobby, is trying to find time. When am I going to your day, Brian? Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's it's in the bin, Brian. It was it was beyond repair. It was completely flattened. So it was one of those Hornby ones. It was. Uh... <laughs> It was completely mangled. It wasn't even though I could make something out of this. It was like, no, <laughs> this is. Yeah, so that's, that's the plan. Um, Nobody wants to come on and join me tonight? Come on, say hello. I'll have to have a look at your snow scene then, we'll suck. Yeah, I put the link in, I'll, I'll put it in again. on that link if you want to join. We've got nobody showing in the basement yet. Yeah, so I think that snow has actually worked out quite well on there. So I'll carry that all the way down. So I'm just really just doing this section here as a bit of an experiment. So I think what I'll do is I'll um, scrape some of this off and go back with the first section so it looks slightly melted and I think with um, some of these a load of those trees on there and some of these little grass tufts as well I'll take them out of the box so you can see a better, better look at them Just <laughs> lovely square. Maybe we should post them to them. So those are are quite nice. So I got the um, the winter kit or the mountain snow kit or whatever it was called off of WWS to get this to try it, which came with these and um, the melted snow and everything like that. I'm not going to use the melted snow. I'll use the other stuff. Have that coming right down here. Have a nice snowy scene going down into the, the water and over onto this side. And of course, if I have a road and there's snow, 
everywhere else. Am I going to put snow on the road and put tracks down the middle of it? I might just make it more work for myself. Whoever wants to build a snow layout, this is a bit of a reference. Yeah, reference on how not to do it. <laughs> Oh, there's John. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. All right, John, I'm going to bring you in. Hello. Hi, John. How you doing? Yeah, Let hang on. I just need to mute the uh, YouTube. There we go. Otherwise, I'm getting double echo from YouTube and this. <laughs> hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Uh, the other <laughs> Good old Alexa. <laughs> How are you keeping, John? I'm good, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah. You join me from obviously my railway room, which I'm sure you've all seen before. Oh yeah. Um, Anybody doesn't know John, he usually does a live stream what, about every two weeks, once a month from your uh, railway. I'm trying room. to do it a bit more often actually, just to get the uh, numbers up a little bit more actually. But yeah, yeah. so every sort of uh, bi-weekly Sunday night at about seven p.m. Um, but yeah, this is obviously the layout room. Um, I don't know how to switch cameras because I've not actually used this software before, but uh, I might be able to, hang on, I might be able to switch. The yeah. There we yeah. Go. I might be able to sort of switch on the settings. So that's obviously, that's the junction part of my layout. Um, we can have a look there. That's the yeah. station. Let me put you up to solo layout and you can give everybody a tour of your layout. Yeah, so this is the this is the station area. Um, we can see uh, New Junction and uh, my wife on the uh, on the footbridge just there. So they make sure I'm running trains on time, etc. <laughs> um, pan round to the junction. That's just behind me. Um, that's kind of the main area where everything sort of goes sort of from and to and across, etc uh what else have we got on here we've got the oh that's the far end that's the loop right down the far end of the garage um what's this one here sorry so this is the overview of the engine shed uh crikey there's quite a few on here actually um i forget how many cameras i have what is that one? <laughs> oh, that's that one sorry that's that one there that's the other end of the station um, which I'm just in the process of replacing at the moment. So I've got cameras going inside this signal box that you can see just to the right hand side. Yeah. Um, the idea is that there'll be more discreet. Um, it... Oh, we lost John there. He disappeared on us. John, if you can hear me, come back. <laughs> right, we got uh, Mark, Captain Stan Static. I'm going to bring him up. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hello, mate. I'm all right. Yeah, it's all we, right, you all. We, uh, we lost John there. Yeah, that's a bit odd, wasn't it? How's things with you, mate? Oh, John's oh, back. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, letting dinner go down. Hey, can you hear me again, John? Obviously, can't use that camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so that was me just playing around with the settings, and uh, I thought the next camera would be one of the USB ones. But then I've just remembered that the uh, USB, sorry, the smaller cameras that I've got around the layout are actually unplugged at the moment. So they're there in the list, but they're not working. So, yeah, All right. the second I clicked on that and it couldn't see anything, it obviously booted me off the stream. So, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> All good uh, fun. It's a very <laughs> impressive layout. Um, so one of my mods will put you a link to your channel up in the chat. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, um, so I'm, what, sure, what, I'm sure Flymo will do it. He's very good. Oh, Flymo's, Flymo's the top mod. He's, he he's is, in everyone's he's, dreams. Yeah, he is absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, he's been with me very early on. Uh, all the way up to my uh, my me hitting a thousand members. So I did a little bit of a special one on the Sunday for a thousand members. So yeah, oh, well so done. That was, pretty, that was pretty mad. It, uh, it, it still believe. surprises me that I reached a thousand. That uh... I, I can't believe a thousand people want to sit there and watch me. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> 
because uh, my uh, my eldest daughter mentioned to me during the week said, "Oh, something popped up on your channel to say you've been going for three years." I was like, "What? Three years?" I said, and they were all like, "Yeah, we didn't think you'd last six months." <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been I've been on YouTube now since two thousand seven, so me putting videos on YouTube is not a new thing. But obviously, doing this live. Mm. Um, the, the, the live sort of side of it and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I get comments from the big YouTubers saying, I don't know how you do it because you've jumped in right at the deep end doing live, whereas we all record our videos and edit it and put them out like that. And it's like, well, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how long I've been doing the lives now. I think it's well over a year. Well, I was doing them during COVID because I was doing a live every day because like everybody, we didn't have anything else to do. And it was just nice to chat to people, you know, when you're trapped in your house and you can't go anywhere. But uh, And then, of course, everyone started going back to work, like myself had to as well. And then I sort of settled into the Thursday evening stream. I mean, I, I just got kind of inspired by just sort of watching people do it. It's people like uh, Ollie at Wardle Road and people like that. And... Sort of sat there, I think, just thinking to myself, well, I've got all these exhibition layouts, but I don't actually have a home layout. Yeah. So it sort of, I think it was, I think it was start of 21 or start of 22. I can't remember now. It must have been the start of 21. But all of a sudden, it just kind of made me go, well, let's build my own layout. And started building it. And then I kept seeing, again, people like Ollie and all this sort of stuff doing live streams and how the layout's progressing and all this lot. And I thought, well, Actually, that's not a bad way to do it. Um, you can sort of keep a record on things. Like I go back and watch, like if I go and watch my first ever live stream I did, I, I can't believe it's the same layout. It's yeah. it, it's so different to look at. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, you know, so I, I started it out of a bit of a blog kind of thing. But then, you know, I've got my regulars. I've got all these sort of people that come in and join in. A bit, a bit like yourself, you know, you'll have the, the regular sort of faces that keep popping in. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it staggers me how fast it's grown, how much it's grown since. But there we go. Yeah, uh, Flymo's put your link up for your channel. Thanks for that, Flymo. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so, I, I enjoy doing, doing the, uh, the. Oh, is that what you're uh, fitting the Yeah, so this is what I've been working on this evening. So it's one of the Rapido um, 15XXs. Um, this is 1506. Um, I would have liked 1504, but they'd all sold out before I got my order in there. But uh, yeah, and anybody that's got anybody that's got a sound fitted one, they'll see my name in the book as well. Oh, you still there? Hello. Yeah, still here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Same, I like doing my lives because it's uh, it's just a, an hour or two on a Thursday. I get to chat with different people and. I keep meaning to bring people on like this and, you know, bring people out and actually have a chat this, with them face to face. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is quite new to me, actually. I've not seen this one before actually, but uh, yeah, you put the link up. I thought, well, go on then I'll do it. Yeah. I've got all my camera. Well, most of my cameras set up anyway. Not all of them, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, it's just nice just to have a, you know, like I, my, I started building my layout during um, lockdown, but I've moved house twice since then. <laughs> so this this what I'm working on here, this twelve by seven. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be hopefully an exhibition layout if it's good enough when I've built it. Um when I built it that way, I thought just in case we move house again, I can easily take it with me. <laughs> are, you, are you there with a the layout then it gets or are you just visiting? Oh I'm just visiting. I don't have anything to to take to, to get. So I'm I'm flying in on the Friday. Yeah. And then I'm flying out on the Monday. So it's the weekend. Um, eldest daughter's coming with me. Yeah. So. Well, I'll, I'll see you there. So I've got um, Highway MPD, which is my smaller of the uh, three exhibition layouts I have. Um, yeah. But that one's there. So it's in Hornby Magazine this month. Um, oh, very good. Yeah. So people might recognize it from that. Um, but yeah, so oh, I'll be there all weekend. So do pop up and say hello. I yeah, I will do. I expect I'll be on the top floor balcony like I was last year. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've never been to Getz. Like, I've been to Worley twice, but I've, I've never been to Getz. And I just thought with 
the, the making tracks layouts being there. I thought, no, I'm, I'm going to go there this year because I think that's yeah, probably that's, a big attraction. So that that's I think they're in there literally all week leading up to the show at the weekend. Yeah, and that's set up because obviously there's nowhere that they can set that sort of length layout up. So there's going to yeah. be a lot of uh, a lot of head scratching and. Yeah, especially seeing, was it the signal system on one section is three volt and on the other section it's five volt and they've a lot of rewiring and stuff to do. It's, it's well, going gonna, gonna to keep them busy, let's put it yeah. that way. So I just want to get one of my locos and just say, can you, hey, can you just run that along it for us, please? Yeah. <laughs> so, me and the wife did go to Chester Cathedral, actually. She's got one of the uh, Elizabeth II's, yeah. the purple, um, the purple like anything purple, my wife will have it, Porterbrook. Corporate Deltics, all those ones. Um, but uh, yeah, we managed to get that for a sneaky run around it. And uh, yeah, made my wife stay anyway. So, so many people that are really interested in it as well when it's parked up in the fiddle yard. So many people, oh, where's, you know, where's get that one? Well, wife, leave it alone. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should bring over my Irish A class with me and say, I'll run that around the layout. <laughs> I, I really like them, actually. You know, it was the first ever loco I saw from that sort of a pure scale yeah. uh, Irish rail sort of group, that kind of thing. And um, I think there was a small little lighting tweak that had to be made to um, them to get the sound and everything in them. But overall, I was really, really happy with it. I was really surprised with it. So it really got yeah. me excited when the Delta landed. Um, and obviously, as some of you may know, I've got a bit mad with the class 37s of so, there we go. Yeah, I've got, I've got one of their 37s. I, when I ordered, I ordered it too late, so I didn't get signed. But then I ordered the chip when they came back in stock. And yeah, I mean that's the advantage. They do they do go and supply all the parts separately. Yeah, that's a, a stock up for me. And then there's another thirty seven chip just waiting there for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've got uh, Mark from Stan over here as well. So we'll, yeah, uh, do you want to tell us a bit about your layout? Mark, for people who don't know it. Mine? Yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry, mate. Um, I've basically got uh, an end-to-end -end layout. Um, it's in the back room, so I haven't got a lot of room in here. Um, you oh, can see yeah. it part of it behind me. Um, and it don't help either that there's a boiler cupboard in here as well. Because <laughs> this, this was originally the bathroom. Obviously, it's um, as our house is rented, um, so we, obviously we can't. I don't know, say over that, and it was in here before. I mean, it's handy for towel storage, but <laughs> yeah, it's uh, in the way a bit. Um, so the longest bit, which is that bit behind me there, that's about eight foot long, and the shortest cell shaped bit where the turntable is, that's about five foot long, or thereabouts. Um, all DC. Um, the main reason for that being is we inherited, or me and my brother inherited my... Um, dad's rolling stock collection when he passed away um okay. unfortunately he passed away cancer in 2018 um and he had over 100 locos i've forgotten them. I mean, it was over 100 and there's about 350 wagons wow um so yeah we've got the, myself and brother got the choice of that um we've both ended up building that so originally david made up some nice wooden plinths um, with small pieces of track on so that we could, um, you know, have, or have, put an engine on display. But we, I mean, my brother ended up building a layout each, actually. Um, so, yeah, because of the, the how many reasons, we just couldn't afford to change to um, DCC. So we're still running on DC, um, which suits it really anyway, because it's so it, it, we both got the same sort of similar size um, set. Where I've got the fiddle yard hidden here behind the turntable, and that um, David's built like a, I think because he's very slightly longer, he's managed to be able to build um, a traverser. Right. Instead. So, so and he's, I think he's you, done his platform layout slightly different to mine, um, so but he's got room for a slightly wider boards as well. You can take it to any shows have. or. What's that, sorry, Matt? So you're going to be taking it to any shows, or? Um, in theory, I could, because it's actually the legs are. I made we've made the legs so they can fold up. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know if it's really good enough for exhibition uh, status, though. 
uh, plus it's, obviously we operate it from the front and i mean you could operate it from the back if if the wire is long enough you could you could operate it from the back i've seen some people at some shows operating it from the front because it gives more interaction then with the people who are looking at it yeah i don't know um i mean it's not it's not it's still not finished yet anyway mm -hmm. Yeah, I reckon um, it's, gonna, it's gonna take me a good two years to do this layout before it's anywhere ready for taking to shows. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean it's not it's not far off. I mean, I, the main thing I need to work on there is I want to redo the platforms, um, the Metcalf ones at the moment. Uh, but I think they're slightly bowed, or one um, more bowed than the other one. So I've got some balsa wood. I've had it for a while, actually, already. It's just a case of having the time where I can spend a few days on it so I can get uh, the wooden bits down and then put the balsa size up against. But the balsas I want to pre-do in um, uh, South East Finecast, um, you know, the embossed plastic card. Yeah. Uh, I was going to use that on it. Um, so obviously waiting for the paint to dry as well, but I've got to be in the right mood and it's finding the time to do it as well. Yeah. Well, I, if I can get them done, then the main area after that will be the goods yard. I got my um, pre-etched sleepers for laying my track. Because obviously I yeah. know. So there's, there's I kind of wish I'd have done that as well. Is it Mark? Sorry. Mark, did you say? Sorry. Yeah, it's hey, Mark. Yeah. Done over. yeah. Sorry, sorry, Mark. I'm terrible with names. No, um, that's all right. right? You no saying worries. about you saying about platforms? Um, I just thought I'd cut to that and maybe just share this with you. Um, that's the Pico uh, platform edges. Um, you can buy them in like multi packs kind of thing. Um, so you got the edgings. Oh, sorry. Fine. You got the edgings all the way along there. And then what I've basically done is I've got cardboard formers be uh, below it, and then the top surface is something called grey board. Yeah. So it's a lot more thicker and a lot sort of more rigid to the um, um, the the, the um, trying to think of that word now Metcalf sort of um, brand of cardboard that kind of thing. So it's a bit more durable. Um, didn't know if that's something that could be. An option for you if you can remove that sort of top surface of your platform maybe you could look at replacing it with a gray board so um yeah i mean i could do the trouble is i've already i've already brought the balsa wood oh right sorry okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's all right john um i wasn't sure what to do to be honest um i like the metcalf ones because obviously you can cut them to size but yeah they're not I don't know if it was me not sticking them together straight. It's probably a combination of that and the fact that I think they've, for some reason, even though they're in a normal room, which obviously is less variation in temperature, they're um, one of them. I think is not so straight as the other one, and it's a bit annoying. So that's why I went for balsa because they're basically a straight platform. So yeah. my brother um, cut, it, cut it for me, so I've got the heights and all that, and I've got. Um, obviously the balsa for the top as well because the idea is i'll fill in the gaps in the balsa on the top so you don't see the joins in the top of the platform yeah um but yeah that that is actually a good idea thinking about it if if anyone wants to use metcalf yeah use gray board instead of the uh yeah i mean I, I, you know, I've, I've got to stick my hand up and be honest i've, I've never ever built uh well up till up till probably about six months ago i never ever built a, a metcalf kit actually um and then my sort of tunnel section that i've got my bridge and tunnel section that i've got just uh, to the side of me here unfortunately is not on camera um but that was the first time i ever sort of used a uh, metcalf kit and it was a bit of a kit bash so i've got a bit of the two road bridge i've got the viaduct um and then i've got one of the retaining walls um, and I've kind of just kit bashed all those together to kind of make this. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I like Metcalf stuff, but I was trying to not have too much. So I've really got a mix on, on mine. So there's Metcalf platforms, but the station buildings, they're um, Hornby resin ones. Um, 
I've got some um, laser cut. I've got a couple of houses. Um, I was about to say, this cut. was one. Good sheds, laser cut. That's one that my wife did um, a few years back, actually. She wanted to dab hand up something. So I said to her, well, if I get one of these kits, do you want to have a go? So, so what, what kit is that, John? Uh, I think it is the um, one of the set of Carlisle. Um, I think it's called the Station Master's House or something like this. Right. Um, I mean, we, we oh, crikey, we did it so long ago. Look, it's actually cobwebs on it, for goodness sake. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was quite interesting. I mean, I, I do like my grey stone buildings and um, that kind of thing. So it was it was nice to see what could be done sort of thing. And that just kind of made me think, well, actually, you can probably kit bash this into something quite good quite quickly. So, yeah, that's what led me into sort of thinking, well, actually, I'll have a look at this for options for otherwise it's like plastic cardboard and plastic wheels material packs that kind of thing and just takes so long and so much time and everything like this but these things obviously you can just get your scissors out and cut away and craft knife and etc and you can just do you can do some pretty cool stuff with them actually yeah it's a cheap way of doing it john i mean my my engine shed if i can get it off about knocking everything about um bear with me a sec that's all right yeah so, my engine said now i i scratch built this yeah um and it's normal card i based it on the super quick one but a longer version so i right. scratch built that um and i've used the wheels kits plastic on it yeah see a lot, got, a lot of I've my got building a, i've got to do the join with all the joins i need to fill in i've got a, a filler what i can fill in um and then i'll paint it up the only thing is the arch. Oh, hang on. I'll try to get this on the camera. Yeah, the arch. Hang on. <laughs> I can't get it on the camera. There we go. The arch is that is it's really hard to cut. An arch yeah, a, cor a corner's cool. very hard to cut with the wheel yeah. sheets. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. Want to that that perfect, but it will do for now. Um I did have visions of altering the layout, but I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah. For an extension if i like it well it will work the problem is is i'll you i'll lose virtually all my fiddle yard um and i don't really want to do that see this is my main way of building stuff so this is a, an old station building which unfortunately i'm not going to use on this layout but basically the inside of it is all greyboard cardboard formers yeah. And then literally all I do is I then put the wheels material sheets uh, across the front. That's the dress stone one. And uh, yeah, just put it along the front there and um, paint it all up basically. But yeah, the actual, you look like the roof there. That's just the slate finish a little bit. That's an unfortunate, oop, that's an unfortunate incident where the, uh, it got run over by a car. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it looks like storm damage. Uh, oh yeah, that's what I've tried to. I've tried to sort of blend it in as best I can, but um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, it uh, we hadn't realised it fallen off, and uh, it's from an old layout, and um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, all of a sudden there was this crunch noise. And it's like, what's that? And got out and ah, yeah, that'll be that. But it's uh, luckily it was only that sort of end of the building, so we could rebuild it. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the normal way of. That's the normal way I would do it, um, but yeah, sometimes you know it's it's so time consuming. Yeah, that is the only thing. I mean, so it's like me using. I like using the well. I think I prefer the the um, southeast client car sheets because oh, um, they're a lot easier to cut than the wheels. There we go. <laughs> yeah, sorry, um, on so little there to show the the station. But yeah, you're right. The paint it's the time because you got to paint them as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that does take time. Obviously, you wait for the paint to dry, but I, I just think they give more depth like that, rather than the card kits where it looks, it looks a bit flat. Whereas, if you've got the embossed, at least you can get some definite more definition to it. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's like a bit of, well, I mean, I'm a bit of a cameo sort of modeler in the sense that everything's like B flat modeling, that kind of thing. Um, I have tried to sort of. 
give a few sort of drops and dips in the actual sort of landscape on this this one but you know looking at my you know, if you look at my other two layouts they're very you know flatland modeling that kind of thing um so yeah if you can sort of give if you give things a bit of height or a bit of depth and all that sort of stuff it just it just improves them yeah yeah that that is my only regret with this is it's obviously all on flat baseboards um i have obviously got uh embankments and and a small tunnel so that was so it leads into the theory yard so that that's got something there um yeah and when you i don't know if you well you can you can see them behind me yeah um obviously you can see maybe, the join in the tunnel for the tunnel top maybe um, we can have a zoom in camera can we yeah can um, we, i'll have to i'll have to move it um, say, see if it, see you if have it to excuse me cool. if it gets dizzy um <laughs> it's not a long enough wire it's just pointing so well we're about to get my fingers in the way <laughs> so there, that's done on um uh Celotex, basically yeah I've, I've and they're removable because obviously where it's designed i mean i, I doubt i'll move the that much but if i want to take it down it's, i thought it's a lot easier to take stuff off than permanently so yeah you're going to have to excuse the joins i need to disguise them a little bit more but it's um it's given it some more depth that way um the tunnel mouth i scratch built myself if i can get the camera around who's i was about to say who's the signal that looks good oh that's a nice tunnel actually yeah that yeah, that is scratch cool. that is basically a uh, gray card oh sorry with um southeast fine car sheet on it okay um and that, I, I scratch built that So oh, that, have, you, that, have you modeled it off anything in particular or um not as such um it's a bit it's sort of similar in a way to one of the railway tunnels down here because i live in kent yeah um oh sorry about this i'm not very good at holding the camera steady um <laughs> so it's sort of similar to that but it's not it's not dead on but i'm i'm sort of quite proud of that no, it looks really good, Mark. It's like turned that. out really well. Um, so, yeah, there, there is some depth here. Um, Who's the uh, signal? That looks okay. Yeah, the signals, their ratio kits. Um, oh, right, yeah, yeah. Built, built them, but they're all motorized with servos. Oh, very good. Well done. Yeah, yeah it I, is I, present I to tried me. doing that myself once and uh, I think I ran out of patience with it in the end. So, I have. Um, yeah bought one of the dapple ones actually but yeah <laughs> that, that, that's why i left it to my brother <laughs> um, no he, he wanted to do all the signal in uh as a present for me so he's he's built he's built all the signals there's if i can get down there there's uh ground signals as well do they work as well do they yeah all the signals that's you got them to there um excuse me a minute you've got obviously the uh station start signals there they all work um there's a ground signal down there as well <laughs> fantastic and the gate uh opens and closes as well that's motorized <laughs> that's awesome um yeah i mean i it's all done by though because it's, it's actually all works off of an arduino yep um and he programmed that as well so basically i laid the track originally yeah and um and then i took it up to my brothers and he did all the wiring oh, i wish i had someone to do that for me <laughs> well, it makes it like... yeah because it's all interlocked as well oh well wow. okay yeah so you can't you can only go if if you're coming from the fiddle yard out onto the line you can only go so far then you just stop unless the signals are set oh that's, that's useful so it's it's got like isolated sections that if your signals aren't set correctly it runs into an isolated stop area yeah uh, yeah basically i mean i'm not sure how he's wired it inside because obviously i left it to him and i ain't got a clue <laughs> But yeah, he wanted to do it, so I let him do it. So I mean, you won't, I, you won't really see underneath. But if you have a point, oh, oh shit, sorry, that's nice oh. then. 
Um, yeah, see, that's the Arduino. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. See the there's yeah. a power pack there as well. I mean, the loose wiring is obviously basically from the signaling in the cables to the signaling to give a little bit of leeway and obviously the controller. Yeah. Um, and you've done that, and no, oh, you won't see. Uh, you pretty much see it. There's a fold-up bed over there, but there is. I can't <laughs> point the camera. At it. That wiring is obviously a bit more tidier. Yeah. Because obviously there's less there, but yeah, basically, apart from the wiring, I've done from the um. Oh, excuse me, the um. Very straight creamery side in. Uh. And the fiddle yard, because actually the fiddle yard board, I, I I made it wider. I had a little one with two sidings, but then I decided to make it wider. Yeah. Um. So I I did that under with his help, but the main two balls he did, he did for me. That's handy. So you deal you deal with all the scenics, and he deals. Yeah, with all the I basically done all the scenics. Um, I relayed the yard, uh, the track in the good yard about three times. Yeah. So far. <laughs> Um, I, always I was going to lay in my track and then I basically leave it bare for probably a good month or so of constantly running trains on it before I do anything else to it, like ballasting or anything like that, make sure everything's fine. Yeah, I, I do the same. I put my track down. It's usually down for at least six months before I do anything on it. Just <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't ballast it straight away. Well, the goods yard is not really ballasted anywhere as such. It's only a mixture of a, a little bit of ballast and... Um, like some cinder ash and that yeah um, but that's never really done that much um i was going to change this point the freeway one because a bit i don't know why the one in the fiddle yard is fine but this one's a bit temperamental and i was going to change the points here and i was going to put a um, double slip in but yep. when i tried to run my milk tankers on there because there's six wheeled ones on there they don't like it right. so that plan's now gone out the window, so I think I'm sticking to the lat in here as it is and just have to keep my finger on the uh, <laughs> one of the freeway point sections and people have to cope with it sort of thing. But, yeah, so that's – that's that. The, it needs a little bit more sort of cinder ash in here to finish it off. Um, and then probably around there I'm going to have a cattle dock yeah. And then I've just got a scenic the rest of it in and that'll be done. Yeah, and that's really the scenic sort of finish. Kind of thing. Um the creamery dairy, if I can get the wire around without oh, well, it's caught up on the chair. Hang on. Sorry, excuse me a minute. <laughs> Sorry, it's got caught up on the chair. Um that's yeah, lovely, the, um it's a lovely area. Yeah, right. One man. of the comments loves it. Uh see Dino's off. Good night, Dino. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, night Dino. Stuart um, Mary's model railways just popped in. Hi Stuart, how you doing? Hi Stuart. Um, yeah, I scratch built that, um, but that's done with the Slater's plastic card, which hasn't got quite enough uh, uh, as much definition as the Southeast Fine Cast. Oh yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, this base that's basically like you said, cardboard and Slater's on there. Um, I like the um, Slater's. Um, uh, recently, I've um, redone some of the fencing on my station um, with the Slater's stuff um, rather than the Pico one because um, the Slater's uh, station fencing is so much finer and so much nicer um, than the Pico one. Yeah, I didn't realise they did that because on my um, my platforms has got the... Um, that's the Pico one because it's obviously... Um, the uh, Southern Railway one. Yeah. Obviously, my layout is, is basically Southern based. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the peak I want on there. I mean, obviously, everything, the fencing screwed on, but everything else is <laughs> white tacked on, as you can see. Hence why there's a lamppost over. <laughs> um, well, because I left it, because obviously I wasn't sure where the platforms, and I thought, oh, I'll stick them down. And I thought, no, I want to redo them. Hence why there's no people on there as well. So when I get around to redoing the platforms, they will be um, finalised and glued in place. So it, you ain't got hideous white tack on it. And um, there'll be figures on there because I've got figures all painted up and ready. 
Yeah. They're just not obviously on there until I sort that out. Lovely. But yeah, so that's a rough look at mine. Um, no, I'll, that's, obviously, you've got the. That's a great layout, Mark. It's really nice. Something to be proud of. Round. Oh, thanks, mate. I appreciate that. I. I feel very. Uh, I'm very well. You. I mean, you must know, and others must know. I'm. I'm quite sort of shy normally. Anyway, um, this. The YouTube stuff has all come back from Alan at Buckland Junction. Yeah. Um, because obviously I, I met Al because Al lives locally to me and um, he sort of encouraged me to go on YouTube. He kept on going on and on. So I ended up, went on there and I've actually found it not so bad. But yeah, I mean, I'll always put myself down, I'm afraid. So you'll have to excuse that. But yeah, any, I do appreciate everyone's compliments. Don't put compliments. yourself down. At least you, at least you, you know, got the the sort of bottle to sort of stand up and say hey this is what i'm doing and i'm yeah. proud of it so yeah no don't don't ever put no, yourself it, down it's, it's no, i mean out. the um it looks great water tower that's actually um an old super quick kit from me from my dad he i think he changed a lot of his stuff over to resin buildings um so i've got that as like a memory of dad on here <laughs> jason's <laughs> asking what make is that turntable uh Oh, sorry. Uh, that's that's a normal bog standard Pico one. Right. Okay. Um, obviously, I've painted it up. It really needs. I need to rust the um, the steel work. That needs some rust wash on it. I need a, a random. I need to randomly do that on it. I'll get around to do it because I can actually at the moment. I haven't actually glued it in. There's a little round. You get like a little round washer, what you're supposed to put on the spindle underneath and glue on. Um, but I haven't, I still ain't got around to doing it in yet, and that's it, been in for ages. Have you, have you motorized it? Have you used an Arduino to power it or anything like that? Or no, no. Um, I mean, I actually fluffed it up a bit when I put it in the track. I don't know if you, it's not quite, it's not quite straight to it. Okay, so time to get Jerry's off as well. Good night, Jerry. To, night jerry um yeah to go to the engine shed obviously you've got jerry. it there but when you look here to the running round, the whole thing is not quite straight because i was trying to do it on my own and when i was gluing down because obviously you get the plastic bits to glue down don't you yeah and um yeah you try holding the turntable straight and gluing them down <laughs> on your own i should have really got the wife in because it's not quite straight so you have to kind of have it sort of about there to go onto it and then you have to move it slightly yeah to go into the engine shed but yeah ideally i either want to motorize it at some point or hand white operate it so i i use the pico turntable myself um and i spoke to a guy called ian jeffries dcc interface um and he does a complete kit that uses an arduino um that you can basically use to either you can either send a dcc accessory command or he supplies it with like a, a little controller hi timber oh, how you doing oh brian's popping off as well see you brian take care guys um yeah but you could you can have like a little push button kind of controller kind of thing that basically just gives you the positions uh, and depending on the button you press it will then have it in the memory on a stepper motor so it works really well for me. Um, I did have a little bit of a malfunction on my channel a few months back where it decided to run really, really fast, though. It wasn't remembering <laughs> its speed setting, so it was like one of those episodes of Thomas the Tank Engine where you're watching James fly around. Yeah. Really, really <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I will probably get around to doing it. Um, I've been half keep thinking about, as I say, changing this board as well um, to make it slightly wider because... Um, I had an incident with our cat the other day. I'm just going to put the camera back for a minute. Sorry, guys. I'm yeah, that's all right. Makes me uh, say we keep holding it. <laughs> oh, let's put that back. Yeah, um, I'm thinking that I keep thinking about changing that because I had an incident with a cat the other day. <laughs> well, I said the other day. It was every when I was at work and the wife um, was giving her flea stuff and she gets very nervous and. Um, she forgot to shut the door to this room and uh, she decided to run in here. 
and she oh, knocked. Yeah. Uh, I had one set of uh, coaches on the back. Yeah. And she knocked them flying. Oh, and I discovered I mean, it. The wife not saying a word, and I wasn't very happy because I thought she'd damaged three Montal coaches. Oh dear. Yeah. Because and obviously technically they're mine and my brothers, and I said, I say, I said to her, if these are broke, you're going to have to apologise to David as well. And she goes, what for? I said, well, because look, I said the body's off here. I said if I can't get that back on, that's three coaches ruined there. I said, why didn't you shut the door before you give it to her? Because you know what she's like. Anyway, I think I've managed to save them. But yeah, I've got, <laughs> I bought some hardball for the back. Um, but when I held it against there, I've discovered that the because the siding is very close to the edge anyway, it sort of touches it. Um, so yeah, I'm I keep thinking that I'll need to go and get a sheet of ply uh, and get it cut wider than this, but obviously it's more money in it. <laughs> it's not just the ply, I need to get I'll have to get some more two by one for the legs and framework, and so I don't know. Jason says, it's all, all it's a lot of work in progress. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to shoot, guys, because it's nine o'clock, and I promised my wife I'd go in early tonight as opposed to sitting out here till silly o'clock at night. Yeah. But, thank uh, thanks much. thanks for having me in the stream. That's uh, right. Really nice Mark. Uh, no worries, John. Nice to see you. Yes. Uh, take care, everyone, and uh, I'll see you all soon. So yeah, I'm going to have to knock off soon myself because uh, I need to get out and see the indoors. Yeah. I think I'm. Is it this Sunday? Yeah, this Sunday I've got a stream on seven o'clock if anybody fancies right. in, but yeah. Right, other than that, take care, mate, and I'll see you at Gets. All right, cheers, Don. Yeah, I'll see you at Gets. Good luck. Bye, John. Yeah, mate. Bye. Take care. Right. All right, so there you go, Mark. Well, um, that's it's a great layout you got there, uh, Mark. Was, thanks for showing us around. But, that's uh, all right, mate. I appreciate it. I just want to go because I've, huh, I've got to do a quick bit of stuff on the computer anyway, so. I all thought right. I might as well annoy you all with my presence <laughs> while I'm here. <laughs> right, I'm going to say goodnight now. So I'm going to yeah. drop you off now, Mark. No worries. Thanks for having me, mate. Appreciate all that. Right. No problem. Right, guys. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like button for me and subscribe to Mark at Stanover and to John at JMC. Uh, as you can see, they've both got some great layouts there. So um, get over to their channels. So John's doing his live this Sunday at 7 o'clock. So look him up and get over there. Um, thanks for joining me. I've had a little bit of practice at the snow there. I think I know what I'm going to do. i got a lot more work to do on this layout before I do any more, but this is giving me an idea now and see what works. So thanks for joining me while I tried it out. Uh, thanks to Jason for hand for the handover. For that's great to have Jason on before me and then hand people over to me. It's, thanks very much, Jason. And I will uh, chat to you all next week. Uh, I've got a video out tomorrow. Uh, I can't even remember what it's on. I think uh, yes, it's on actually building this hillside. That's what the video is on tomorrow. That'll be out tomorrow. Um, so thanks again, guys. I'll see you next Thursday. If anybody is here from the, the north of Ireland and is heading to Enniskillen. I hopefully I'll be there on Saturday. There's a model train show in Enniskillen, so I'm going to try and get to that if I can. And uh, thanks to uh, everybody for tuning in. And don't forget to hit the like button on your way out and um, subscribe if you're new here. And if you've got any questions or comments or anything, you can stick them into the comments after the live stream. Oh, hi, Howard. I don't think I said hello to you, but hi and bye. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm going to hit the end stream button now, and I will catch you all in the streams out there. Take care, everyone, and uh, enjoy your modeling.